This is a logical project. This is going to be the second episode on the 300ZX Z31 build series. The goal of this um, today's video is to rebuild, finish up rebuilding the cylinder heads so that the by next episode the cylinder heads are ready to be installed into the engine. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to install all the um, gasket materials and the valve cover along with the exhaust manifold. Stay tuned. Okay, so before I start rebuilding these heads, uh, I want to point out that uh, someone made a suggestion about adding manual, manually focusing the camera so I can, um, in case I want to shoot something up close, I can just simply adjust the camera to focus easily instead of expecting autofocus to work perfectly like how it never works but um yeah I have to clean the camera now <laughs> because it'd be uh, it would now be greasy with my dirty hands but oh well one one next thing is um right now I'm trying to figure out if I should keep on using DaVinci Resolve or not because I have a currently have this weird video card issue where the issue is that my video card is under spec, which is which doesn't meet the requirements for the program, which is causing crashing issues. But at the same time, DaVinci Resolve is a really good video editing program, and I'm willing to put up with the BS I'm dealing with just to get the just because it just works really well and it's very nice to you. So. We'll see how well I could, um, how long I'll last with this. But because of that, the issues I'm having with it, I won't be able to record at a, um, not record, but master at a resolution higher than 720p, unfortunately, due to uh, hardware constraints. I'll eventually upgrade my video card so I can, uh, I can record at uh, 1080p, but for now, 720 is the best I can do. But, uh... Other than that, it should be fine. Also, one more thing that's quite noticeable, I'm pretty sure headphone users are already noticing this, but you might notice some weird uh, volume issues with the audio, and that's because the, the my old phone, it suffered a tragic accident. And so I'm not using a different phone for my audio recordings, and it seems to have a really crappy uh, design on their gain control, which is causing my voice to randomly get quiet, and then uh, when I pause, and then talk again, it's going to be clip, super clipping and very loud, and it's suddenly it's going to get quiet again. It's really frustrating, but... um. Right now, I'm trying to acquire a new phone, so I, I don't have to deal with this annoying recording mess. Or even better yet, get a proper external microphone for the camera, but this is what I have to deal with for now. Sorry about that. Okay, so to start, um, first thing I do is on the back of the heads, there are these um, caps I need to install. And it goes on the back of the, both of these heads, and this holds the um, the covers a bolt that holds the cam the camshaft onto the head. And it's just only three bolts. It's only three bolts. So I have these uh, gaskets here. And I'll lower the camera so you can see them. And looks like a. Looks like it's some kind of cork gasket, so I might not need to use gasket maker. But um, yeah, I just might. Okay, actually, I might just use gasket maker. Better be safe than sorry. A bunch of bolts, a bunch of brackets that need to be installed in this head. Lots of parts. Lots of parts. Oh, here's the covers that I need to reinstall. And yeah, the goal is to 
for, uh, make sure by the end of this video I'm supposed to get the get heads ready. So first things first, I need to clean up the mating surface. Let me get brake clean. The brake parts cleaner, even though it's only meant for brake parts, works great on anything else. As long as it's not plastic or sensitive electronics. So I'm just going to spray in the tissue. And just um, clean up the mating surfaces. Clean it well because uh, while the head is out, might as well clean it so we don't have to worry about um worry about oil leaks that I have to fix what when the cylinder heads are in the car. Okay now put the camera down. I have to clean the uh, these surfaces here. Huh, size old gasket. I cannot tell if they use gasket maker or not, but because I don't know. But yeah, since I already have the new gaskets, might as well just chuck the old one. But yeah, I'm going to go to side caution and just use gasket maker. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be less likely to leak. Uh, so, same thing as on the cylinder heads, right? break clean in a paper towel or rag or whatever you use and it's clean. But not so much in a NA application, which I'll eventually get rid of. And I talk about the exhaust manifold, not the lack of a turbo. I guess I don't feel like dealing with the maintenance uh, or having a turbocharged car. Such as running synthetic oil. Okay. These are... I guess they're clean enough. Next thing is to uh, get my gasket maker. There it is. High tech uh, gasket maker. Come on. Gasket gasket sealer sealant. You can put it on uh, between a paper gasket and just make sure my um I'm still recording. Yeah, I put it between the paper gasket and a uh metal surface. But I'm using uh doesn't seem to be paper, but I'm still gonna use a gasket maker. And what I do is make sure you got all the bolts out and ready. Gotta move things out of the way. And uh, I'm pretty sure these doesn't really need um, uh, NACs. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to very lightly lubricate the surfaces. Just very lightly. And I'm ready to make a mess. Very lightly. Well, I'm not gonna touch the camera now. Oh wait, shoot, it's not even focus. Okay. I'm going to oops. Lightly coat the other side. Forget for this glue this type of glue, it seems very Wet, viscous. Something I noticed. Gotta wipe off ex excess. Last thing I want is this to potentially get into the engine. I would think that's likely. And then I'm just going to uh, set this on. Maybe I should uh, dub put it on the um, gasket on before the um, uh, try move so it can camera can see. It. 
Should put the gasket on before printing cap, I guess. And then just thread these in. Things good. Okay, and then now I'm gonna look up the torque spec because I don't actually have it on me right now. So apparently there's no torque spec for the these covers here, so I, all I did is I kind of hand tightened them. Just, you know, just enough to be fairly snug, but not like, um, crushing them. Although they are kind of being squished a little bit. Okay, so next is this side. This time I'm going to apply the, apply the, uh, apply directly onto the, uh, to the cylinder head first. So just gently coat it. Okay. Okay. Put the gasket in. On. Okay, and then gently coat the other the gasket. Take a zoom in. There you go. Come on, close. I don't want you to dry out. Go. The gasket. Cover, I mean. And secure it. One, two. Three. And then hand tie these. I hand, um, torque them to snug. Make sure to torque them evenly because this is a fairly thick gasket. Okay, there you go. Both of them are now installed. Let me readjust the camera a little bit. There you go. Next is to do the, um, the, what's it called? Cam seals. Camshaft seals. There you go. On the front. Parts out of the way. Okay, next is the camshafts seals. These need to be replaced along with a timing belt because our, these are known to leak. It's recommended to replace these every 60,000 miles along with the timing belt. So um, I got these new seals from the cylinder head rebuild kit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first coat, um, coat it with oil. So I have this uh, 5W30 generic engine oil, conventional engine oil, and I'm just going to just lube it up. Makes it easier on the seal and then less, um, uh, less likely cause any um, premature seal, uh, seal wear and then I just want to slip this, slip this in there you go there you go and then can I just want to at first push it in a little bit and it looks like I could just push it in by hand although maybe I need to get a hammer to help out a little bit yeah now um if you have an axle nut uh, set it's rec it's recommend you use that to hammer the seal in or some or even a proper seal uh, press because um, to evenly press 
press the seal in, but because I don't have any, I'm just going to just use, I guess, a socket and just evenly tap it in. Let's grab a hammer. <sighs> That's annoying. Okay, not so, since this is not a tutorial, I'm just going to just use a business end of a ratchet. So, uh, I'm just going to tap this in, gently. Yeah, I'm going to need something heavy. Just gently tap it in evenly. And um, if you're using a axle nut, um, set the... You want to remember that um, be care you want to be very careful when tapping this in because there's no, there's no lip or any on the head or in the seal to prevent the seal from going inside the head. And if, it, if that happens, then, well, you're kind of screwed. So right now I'm just tapping in the seal. And you want to at least get it flush with the cylinder head. If you... There you go. There you go. It's um if you want if you want to you could go a little bit further, but like a, you want to go maybe a mil, one millimeter in. Just just is slightly enough that it's slightly deeper in than fully flush. But there you go. Seals installed. And now and it works perfectly. And now it's time to install the second one. Okay, both uh, cam seals are installed. So next is to uh, replace the valve cover seals. Here's uh, one. Here's one. And where's my other one? And here's the other one. I'm gonna eventually paint these valve covers red. Okay. But um, for the time being, I just want to keep the car running. So um, I'm just going to just um, leave it as is. So first, you want, first thing you want to do is grab the um, gasketing um, seat, uh, rubber seal that goes around the valve covers and just press them in by hand. From visual inspection, they seem... Um, both um, both of them seems identical, so I don't think there's a separate passenger side and driver side seal. But um, yeah, it looks like they're reversible also. Like it looks like it'll fit both directions. Oh no, they're not reversible. Never mind. Oops. Yep, uh, there's only one air rotation, but you, you can tell because um, it just won't fit right. So yeah, just press them in. There's these tabs here you want to watch out for. Make sure you kind of don't want to um, pinch, press, uh, cut the um, new seal. So I just want to kind of just kind of press it in. Maybe it helps if I use oil. It is new. And uh, just need to do the same on the other side now. And it's difficult. Okay, so both valve cover seals are on. Let me grab the other one. Now, moment of truth. Time to uh, put these valve covers on. So, um, if I'm correct, the the um, cylinder head with the distributor is the driver's side, and that's the one where the um, the one without the uh, what's it called? The fill cap goes to. So I'm just gonna put this in. Ooh. Nice. And then put these in. This little one in. It's really interesting how massive these heads are compared to 
Like even my Corolla, the it has dual overhead cam, yet the heads are like probably almost half the size as this one. It's weird. But yeah. So in. Okay, next thing is um, the screws. The screws screw on the cylinder head. And um, one always replace when you replacing the gasket that goes on the valve cover. You want to always make sure you get the kit that comes with a new uh, new seal for the screw also. So that way you don't have to worry about uh, oil leaks leaking coming out from where the um, bolt holes are. So. So it's a little bit weird. Um, yeah, for some reason, cannot. I'm pretty sure it came with the uh, valve cover seals. I think these are the ones, but it's not exactly identical to the old one. Although the new one is a little bit more pliable compared to the old one. And yeah, it just doesn't seem quite right. But at the same time. They look similar enough that it probably would work. I'm willing to bet that maybe it just from years of um, use it got degraded. So I'm just going to put this back, um, screw this on. Um, let me double check the instructions. Factory service manual doesn't seem to um, say much except that it goes like this. It goes so flat against the engine like this, like this, and then. The, you have the rubber with the metal side of the rubber facing up and then you have the screw goes through like this. Doesn't seem right but um, I guess that's what the factory manual says so I'm going to do it that way. So um, I'm just going to zoom in. So I have the, apparently it's supposed to be metal washer like this. Come on, focus. So you have a metal washer like this with the open end up. And then you have the rubber. Which goes like this. And you have the metal side up. And then you just screw it in, apparently. Yeah, it really doesn't seem right, but I don't know. Well, it is not tutorial, so... Yeah, well. Okay, so... I have finished this cylinder head over here. Turns out the... This, um... Uh, rubber uh, piece here is the correct... Uh... Washer for the... Valve cover nut bolts, or nut uh, screws, whatever you want to call them. And, um... Yeah, just apparently these uh, got so hard that they got uh, permanently deformed, which is why they look, um, it looks different from the new one, but uh, they're actually the same part. And yeah, this is like, the old one is like a hockey puck, you know, really stiff rubber, kind of useless now. Basically, uh, first thing you want to do is you want to set, remove the old rubber piece. One thing, um, one technique I like to do is get two pliers. One grabs a screw, and then the other one grabs a metal washer that's covering the uh, uh, rubber piece, and it's kind of just kind of yank it out, wiggle it out. Takes a little bit of time and effort, but it'll eventually come out. Eventually, it's really difficult. There you go, we got it loose, and then just take this uh, metal washer out, and then unscrew the. Oops, unscrew the ru old rubber piece. And then just chuck it in the corner. And then uh, you want to grab the new rubber piece. And then how you want to assemble it is uh, the lip facing up. And then the rubber on top with the shiny side. You should see like a meta uh, metal washer does. Um, in, in, inside the rubber and you want that to face up and you screw in on the top and then what you want to do is you actually want to screw this end 
tight enough that it squishes the rubber down and fills in the rubber um, washer, excuse me, the metal wa outer washer thing. So basically what I'm going to do now is just finish all these other screws and then so I can complete the cylinder head. So basically you want to, you don't have to tighten these. Um, because you have to take them out again, you have to take them out again to tighten the rockers inside. But for now, I'm just gonna just screw these in. See, so take zoom in here. As you could tell. So I want to screw this down until. And it kind of crushes the rubber in place, and then you know that's uh, somewhat tight enough. And I want to do it for all of them. And then, yep. One thing I almost forgot to install is the cylinder head temperature sensor. And that is located on the driver's side head. Where is that? There's a little, if I could tilt this, there's a little opening for it over here. And um, for those who don't know, the VG30, and I'm assuming also the VG33 series engines, they use a thing called a cylinder head temperature sensor, which does exactly as the name implies. And um, the ECU on those, on those engines you do uses uh, this sensor here to determine if the engine is fully warmed up, if it's um, if it's running a, if it's a, if it's doing a cold start, if it's um, overheating, for example, and if it um, if the sensor is failing, this uh, the ECU would attempt to guess estimate the sensor value but it doesn't really do a good job so you have weird idle issues poor fuel economy um, over richening uh, fuel mixture stuff like that or leaning out issues and it's a common yet silent fail part that should be replaced on uh, 300 ZX's now uh, try remember I think yeah, no. So this one, I don't think it's a good idea to use NACs on this uh, because it relies on metal metal contact, and I'm worried that the NACs can, would act like an insulator. Just focus that. If uh, there's no coolant flowing through it, it just relies on the metal uh, tip. Uh, press against the cylinder head itself directly so I'm worried that the NACs might act like an insulator so I'm just going to screw in directly without any NACs and I don't know exactly the torque value in this but it's just like torquing a spark plug very low or hand tight well not hand tight but like snug so I screw this in <laughs> Just note that you don't have to remove the cylinder head, of course, or during take out the timing belt to replace this. And it's a very good idea to replace the sensor if you're having weird idle issues or fuel economy issues or performance issues. So the torque spec, if you want to use a torque wrench, it calls for uh, 9 to 12 foot-pounds. That's very low value. So don't over time this. Oh. Hmm. So you don't have the proper socket. It sucks. Yeah. I don't have the proper socket at me. Note to self, um, tighten that sensor eventually. Watch as I forget to tighten the sensor and something bad happens. So on the cylinder heads, for some reason I got uh, three sets of um, exhaust manifold gaskets. 
Although I noticed that uh, two are identical and one is different. And I noticed a uh, different one doesn't seem to fit. So I'm assuming it's for a different engine. Well, not different engine, but a different variation of the engine. So, um, there's only, um, you don't have to worry about putting the um, head gasket wrong because if you, the bolt pattern won't light up if it's installed wrong. See now. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. So apparently there's like, uh, not sure I could see it. I'm just gonna take the camera out and mount. Forgive me for camera shake sickness. But, um, there are uh, different holes on the, on the, um, cylinder head. It's probably for uh, different manifolds because this engine's use in the Pathfinder, Maxima, Quest, and of course the 300ZX. So, um, so I noticed that um, this weird um, gasket fits fine, perfectly on the driver's side um, head cylinder head and the normal head gasket fits fine on the passenger head so eh, I guess it's just a Nissan thing. So next I have these really heavy cast um, exhaust manifolds. Yep. Time to install them. Okay, so for a fresh pair of gloves. Uh, new, uh, not new, but um, empty memory card. And I'm back in business. So, we're gonna install the exhaust manifold. Uh, manifolds, first thing to do is install the gaskets. Note if you need for any uh, gasket maker. Next is coat it with NICs. Seems really thick. Next, install the exhaust manifold. Oh, this is heavy. Japanese steel. Oh well. Even though it's not worth bragging about in the first place. And uh, just make sure to print the wash right here. And uh, so you can zoom in. Yeah. My dirty hands. Focus. Okay. About oh, almost about to pull AV and E here. But uh, yeah, you need to put in this washer here, and then you need to put in the nut, and just simply screw this in. So the torque spec for the cylinder head nuts is 13 to 16 foot pounds. 13 to 16 foot pounds. I'm gonna grab my torque wrench and start this down. 14 sounds like a good number. Okay. Okay. So I can torque these down. Hey, click. Click. Huh, very light clicks. Okay. Okay. Click. And then click. There you go. Okay, exhaust manifold installed. Now time to install this set. The other one. Yep. Goes just like this. Okay. It's a big heavy thing. And then don't forget the washers. And the nuts. 
Yeah, I probably need to them down ratchet. And bolt it down. Of course, I don't have to write it. Socket installed. Okay, and then time to use the cross wrench. Let's go fourteen and a half. Click, 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 click. Okay, now. Some people take, um, don't bother putting the exhaust uh, manifold covers on their cars, and in most cases I would agree with that, except the Z car just makes a stupid amount of heat. Like, it runs silly hot. And of course, there's sensitive uh, components running right next to the exhaust manifold, so. Probably a good idea to put in the heat protection. Yeah, uh, to keep the the heat shielding, keep the um, keep uh, hosing from catching on fire and other issues. So, um, of course, when I disassembled it, I accidentally let me double key. Yep, it's recording. I accidentally uh, broke some of the bolts, but so I'm just gonna reuse whatever. You know what I should do? I should probably use NECs. It's a perfect time to use NECs. Yeah, good idea. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is go bolt back up the exhaust manifold. Well, it'll be all right because the car will be running eventually. Eventually. Um. Eventually. Oh, don't forget this bracket here. I wish I could, the camera can see it. Yep. They have this bracket that um, holds the O2 sensor plug. Don't forget to put that on. Uh, I can make a mess. Screw that in. You definitely want to have an O2 sensor, especially since this is fuel ejected. And like how opposed to get a feedback from if if the uh, car is making uh, black clouds of smoke or something. Okay. Sorry, of hard time seeing this. Okay, a few more. Of course, for some reason, there's no torque spec for the exhaust manifold cover, although probably won't even need one, but so I'm just going to just tie it until it feels Right, I guess. Okay, so I got the shield, um, exhaust shield installed. Now I'm going to install the other one, the passenger side. Passenger side, it comes in two pieces. Uh, the upper and bottom. I'm going to just bolt this in. And if I'm correct, the... Bottom one, it sits, yeah, it sits uh, underneath the top one, like so. Yeah, looks about right, I think. And yeah, I just want to bolt this in. 
This one has lots of broken bolts. That would be annoying. So, while I'm, while I'm here, I decided to mock up the, um, the Thai exhaust uh, manifold system. Mainly, one reason because it's basically, it's really difficult to film while um, underneath the, on, on top of the car, while to install the car because of lack of space. And also, some um, things I noticed with the uh, Nissan's design. Nissan designed this car to uh, have a low boost quick spooling turbo. So what they did is they designed an exhaust system that minimizes the volume between the cylinder head and what would be the turbocharger. And that would be great and all, except that um, they decided to just install a longer downpipe for people who doesn't have a turbocharger. So, they, so now you have uh, really small primary runners in fact, or more like non-existent runners on the exhaust manifold and you have unequal length um, headers, which I guess is good for exhaust note, along with, um, it's just not really good, des uh, hard to bend. It's not really good design for uh, an NA application. So what I'll probably do is I'll, uh, I'll swap this out with a performance header, um, header eventually. I also have to swap this out with the performance header because the stock manifolds is uh, cracked, has cracks in several places. And, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be replaced. And it's, e it's cheaper and easier to get a aftermarket header than it is to get a original factory uh, manifold. So, um, yeah, that's it for tonight. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning. So this is recorded uh, a few days later after the last shot. Uh, I had to re-record this. Um, but anyway, um, and he replaced the exhaust manifold because they're cracked. I want decent performance out of my NA engine. I'm doing an NA build. And uh, the downpipe on the, um, on the car is completely fractured because someone else tried to install a uh, botched custom exhaust system, custom fabricated exhaust system, which ended up cracking. So I'm gonna replace the entire exhaust systems from the manifold down to the tailpipe. So uh, yeah, for the exhaust manifold is the first thing that'll go. So um, yeah, on the next episode, I will uh, replace the crank seal, known to leak. I need to be replaced every time you do a timing belt job, which is every 60,000 miles. And you also replace the tensioner stud. It's very important on the uh, VG30 and VG30 engines because, excuse me, VG30 and VG33 engines because they are known to um, for snap for due to the uh, heat of the engine, which is very bad. You don't want a um, timing to break on an interference engine, has happened before. And um, I'm going to clean up the cylinder walls and prep, and then hopefully I can ins easily in get the cylinder uh, heads installed on the car. Um, my friends are not available to help me uh, over the weekend, so eh, one man team, I guess. Well, um, hope you like this video. Um, I'd like to know any uh, comments, suggestions, anything I should do to improve the video. Um, I tried to ad uh, adjust my editing style because this um, segment, this episode featured a lot of uh, small bits that need to be done, not like one big thing I need to do. So I just rap did a rapid cutting style. Want to know how you feel about this? Should I go back to my old style? Should I keep this style? Should I do some other editing method? What do you think? Well, um, this is a lot of projects. Um, Gotta finish editing my video uh, episode. <laughs>